the video. Today is Thursday, May 13th, 2021. And on the Christian calendar, it's Ascension Day. I'm Pastor Art. And I'm Quentin. And our intent today is to share some insights about the Ascension of Jesus and the importance of this day in history and in our lives. The Bible is a revelation of human history that thankfully involves God's story of redemption after the fall. The story is one in which God establishes a, a unique relationship of covenant with a people he calls his own. This covenant then points to a time when a perfect resolution will be made to restore sinners to a holy God. That time begins with the incarnation of Jesus, the Son of God, who then willingly dies in the place of sinners and is raised on the third day to complete the way of restoring for sinners. This must be accepted by faith. Forty days after the resurrection is the event of the ascension. That ushers in the reign of Jesus over all creation, and more specifically, those saved by grace through faith. We read about the ascension in Luke 24, where it says, Then he, that's Jesus, led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. What I love about Luke's version of the story is the effect that it has on the disciples. By Jesus, he blesses the disciples. He imparts spiritual power on them before he's taken up and, and taken in that Shekinah glory of God. And it's that power that fills them with joy and draws them to be continually in the temple, that draws them to worship God. So the power of Ascension Day is that power to be drawn together in worship. R.C. Sproul, in his book, The Work of Christ, he comments on Ascension Day, mindful of the ways that spiritual nostalgia often sets in. Spiritual nostalgia is the way that we think we would have been better off if we just lived 2,000 years ago. That I would have a better faith. That I'd be a better Christian if I could have only lived when Jesus lived. But Jesus himself taught in John 16 that it's actually better for us. It's better for the church that he be ascended. That picture is given in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 through 16, of the impact, really, of the ascension on the world. I'm going to read that for you. Ephesians chapter 4, 7 through 16. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ's portion. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean, except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. It was he, Jesus, who gave some to the apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Those first verses from 7 to 13, 
we learn that Jesus not only returns to his glorious position of authority at the right hand of the Father, he also begins his reign over the church of which he is the head. And further, the promise that comes from John 16, which you quoted, comes about when the Father and, or when the, from the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit is sent 10 days later on the day of Pentecost to raise up and assign ministry to specific leaders. What is that ministry? To prepare God's people for works of service that will build and mature the body of Christ. That's the purpose of worship and preaching and teaching so that we grow together. So it's better that Jesus is ascended. And the, and the last three verses really give us that picture of why it's better. Because yeah, we, we now live under Jesus' sovereign reign as he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. It's better to be under Jesus' reign. It's better because now all creation is being worked towards God's redemptive ends. It's better because now we are being built up into one body in love and in unity with Christ as its head. It's better because now Jesus in heaven is preparing a place for us. And we know he won't return until everything is perfectly set. So now until then, Yes, the church, we continue to be built up and to love and to serve one another. And we will continue to speak this truth in love. So that all may come to know this, have the power of this gospel message to see the full picture of God's love from incarnation to coronation, to know the power of God to save people from sin. So that in faith they might repent but then also be filled with the blessing and the joy of God. That's the power of ascension. Amen. Let's live in that power and let's pray. God, you are a good God. You have worked out your salvation in a way that no one else could have planned. And to, to think about that, to live in that, just fills us with joy. So God, may we as a church be, be built up in joy. May we be built up in love so that we may be equipped to serve one another, to love one another, so that all may come to know the good news of Jesus Christ, born, crucified, resurrected, and now ascended. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.